And the truth is cameras are a terrible investment. In January 2022, Leica announced the M11. 61 megapixels, 14 stops of dynamic range, but the biggest physical difference from the previous version was a new battery. Have Leica cameras peaked? Should you feel the fear of missing out? I'm Jack, a scientist and street photographer. I love shooting with the M system, not just because of its heritage, simplicity, but also because of what it's missing. No autofocus, no EVF, which forces photographers to do more of the work. It's not for everyone. And this video is for those on the fence. Today, let's talk about three settings you can change in your camera right now that mimics the Leica shooting experience for free. Give each of these a try first. And if you're still all in, let's then talk about the best camera Leica have ever made. The one you should get. And no, it's not the M11. How can any reasonable person spend this much on a camera? I'm a working professional who does okay, but can a fear of missing out really justify something this expensive? The first setting you should change in your camera is obvious. Turn off autofocus. The M in Leica M might as well stand for manual. You'll now need to work harder for every shot, judging the distance between you and your subject, all while balancing lighting and composition. You can turn on focus peaking to light up what's in focus, but it's very tempting to turn on autofocus when you've missed a few shots in a row. So you may want to shoot with manual focus only lenses. My favorite one to start with is TD Artisan's full frame 50 millimeter F2. Sharp, not many optical compromises. You can find my video about it here and the affiliate link down below if you'd like to support the channel. I found manual focus freeing because I felt like a director deciding what to focus on for every frame. It slowed me down and was oddly quite relaxing. And this is where you should get off the Leica Express. Is this like the true rangefinder experience where you're trying to line up two images at the center of your focus point? No, but spend $70 on a manual focus lens, get it out of your system and never look back. I just saved you at least hundreds of dollars, if not hundreds of hours of research, but I couldn't save myself four years ago. It was the end of another 12 hour day and I was tired of staring at screens, answering the phone, responding to emails and analyzing data. It's screen, slightly bigger screen and an even bigger screen again. The prospect of staring through an EVF all night was just one screen too many that day. And I started to seriously consider it for the first time. The thing about shooting with the rangefinder is that it's optical. You get to experience your environment directly around you without some screen blocking your view of the scene and your lens. Leica's optical viewfinder is a freeing experience. Your perspective through the viewfinder is wider than what the camera sees through the lens, so you have more creative control over the final image. Is there a cheaper way to get this experience? Turn off exposure preview in your camera and shoot with a wider lens than you normally would, say a 24 millimeter lens to get a final 35 millimeter image. Use the wider focal length to sample the scene and know you're only shooting for the middle two thirds of the frame. If you're using a high res sensor like the 61 megapixels and the Sony A7CR, map a custom button to the APS-C crop mode so you can toggle in and out of a 1.5 times crop to preview the frame around the frame. Is this the same as the pure experience of the range finder patch surrounded by frame lines in the Leica? No, but you've got a similar experience for free. Now it's out of your system and you can move on several thousand dollars richer, but you're still here. You must really want that Leica. It's time for my Hail Mary, the last setting you can change in your camera right now for a taste of the Leica experience. Dark mode. The viewfinder was black. My camera had broke. Most brands release new cameras every two years, so it's not designed to last a lifetime. Is every camera a distressed asset? Even after a decade on the market, the M8, M9, M240, and now the M10s still hold their value really well. This wasn't an impulse decision. It took me three years to save up. Turn all your screens off. Flip it closed if you can, and set your lens to manual focus at f8 or f11. Pre-focus your lens to three or five meters away. You'll need to use a distance indicator in your EVF. And we're now in zone focus territory and shooting completely blind. The hit rate in street photography is generally pretty low. If I get five to 10 photos out of 100, that's already an incredibly productive photo walk for me. But expect this rate to plummet while you're shooting from the hip. Your depth of field at f8 or f11 is enormous, almost everything will be in focus if they're around five meters away, especially if you're using wider lenses like 28 or 35. Leica shooters like to go on and on about how manual focus is actually quicker than autofocus because of zone focusing. And it's a very different look than shooting wide open on your mirrorless camera. You can get into the thick of the crowds and get a chaotic scene that fills the frame without ever bringing the camera 
up to your eye. It's very exciting to go back home to see what you've captured because every frame was a shot in the dark. That's how all film shooters feel. Is it the pure zone focus experience setting the hyperfocal distance using the engraved markers on Leica lenses? No, but you've had a taste without paying a dime and now you're free to go. Tens of thousand dollars richer. You've been warned. I did my best to get rid of you, but you're still here and I promised. The best Leica camera ever made, in my opinion, is not the M11. All of its supposed upgrades focused on the latest tech. Just like all the other manufacturers. 61 megapixels, all the resolution in the world to showcase when you've missed critical focus, which will be all the time using the rangefinder. A huge new battery, quick access and USB-C charging. The truth is all the energy being drained is from the six inches behind the camera. If you can get a thousand shots or even half that in a day, I'd be amazed because it takes that much longer to shoot through the rangefinder. The M11 does have a better optional EVF and a live view experience, but don't bother. They're both still very lagging compared to what we have in normal mirrorless cameras and the optical rangefinder is what you're paying for. Not to mention the alarming rate at which broken shutters, bugs and bricked cameras are being reported for the M11 across the internet. I'm sure it's a fantastic camera, but none of these upgrades matter to me, which is why I think Leica cameras peaked with the M10R. It has plenty of resolution, 40 megapixels. Dynamic range is a little worse than the M11, but still very good. High light recovery is fine and low light performance is great. Usable up to ISO 16,000. It's viewfinder, focusing mechanisms, and form factor are all identical to the M11. They share a lot of accessories actually, but it is a much more stable processor and platform that has been around for many years. I would go with the M10R over any of the older bodies like the M10, M240, M9, or M8, just because it's not that old and the likelihood of range finder misalignment or sensor degradation is pretty low. But please don't go into debt buying cameras. It took me three years to save up for the M10R, which on the second hand market is several thousand dollars cheaper than the latest M11. But just before you pull the trigger, the Nikon ZF is actually the most relaxing manual focus experience I've had on any camera. And it's all made possible by this one tiny accessory. You'll find that video here when it's ready to go. I'm Jack trying to capture the peace in every moment 